I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, we will continue talking about musical strings. So this is the second lecture, Musical Strings 2. It's a continuation of the previous one where I have introduced a model of a musical string, a significantly simplified model. And I will talk about the same model and I will try to derive certain um, differential equations which are basically the same as in the previous lecture but from a completely different standpoint, from the standpoint of the energy. Well, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens presented on Unizor.com. I do suggest you to watch this lecture from this website because uh, every lecture on the website has textual part which basically like a textbook plus uh, all the lectures are organized properly in a logical sequence. There are menus and you can go to unizor.com, choose Physics for Teens course. This is the waves part of this course and now we're talking about transverse um, waves and this is the second lecture about musical strings over there. So these are um, hierarchy of the menus which have to, you have to go through. So I do recommend you to take the whole course there is a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens on the same website, which is definitely a necessary uh, um, uh, subject to, to know before you go to physics. Um, mass is just a fundamental part of any physics course. Uh, now, the whole website is completely free. There are no ads, no financial strings attached, no other strings attached, so just pure knowledge. Enjoy. Now, back to musical strings. First of all, let me remind you very briefly the, the model which we are talking about and how I have derived certain differential equations in the previous lecture. Very briefly and very fast. I do recommend you to, if you didn't really watch the previous lecture, go into the previous one and watch it uh, in entirety. But in any case, the model of a uh, musical string which I have introduced is the following. So you have uh, two springs and some kind of a point mass in between. Now the strings are already a little bit under tension. They are stretched a little bit, the same way as musical uh, string. Before you're playing this, you have to really turn, for instance, um, some some kind of. Uh, uh, you have this mechanism, and I don't know how it's called, in, in a violin or a guitar, where you're turning uh, some kind of a um, I don't know, bolt or whatever else, uh, which, m which makes the string um, uh, under tension. So you're stretching the string. So this stretching the strings, initial stretching, initial, I kind of model with uh, two uh, identical strings with a mass in between and strings are already stretched a little bit. So let's just assume that initial unstretched uh, length of the combined two strings is L, but now we have stretched it to L plus lowercase l. So right now this is L plus L distance. So they're stretched a little bit. Initial is L capital and uh, increment is lowercase l. So the total length is L plus L and it's stretched. We also assume K or kappa, Greek letter kappa, uh, as a coefficient of elasticity of these springs, string, springs. In this case, these are springs. I model string with a spring. Uh, okay, so and the mass is m, which is point mass. Obviously, strings, springs are weightless, assumed. So this is a very simplified model <coughs> Excuse me. of a, a, a real musical string. Musical string is more complex, and whether we will learn it or not, it doesn't really matter right now, because my, my purpose is to introduce you into complexity of oscillations in this particular case. All right, so now when we pluck the string, what does it mean from the model standpoint? Well, it means that I will just move this particular mass 
a little bit up so it goes to this position and the springs are here and they are even more stretched so they're already stretched here in the horizontal um, position but now when I uh, uh, displace my uh, central mass a little bit higher let's call this distance this is a y axis so this is y of t y of t is the displacement as a function of time so whenever I did this I stretched it even more so what I'm uh, trying to do is I'm trying to introduce some kind of a um, differential equation uh, which will um, help me to resolve this function y of t and uh, as before I'll just compare the forces uh, which are acting on this mass and uh, connect it with the uh, second derivative acceleration which is um, basically the um, Newton's law. So the force is supposed to be equal to mass times acceleration. So acceleration is actually second derivative of t. Now mass we know this is second derivative of t and now we have to define what is actually F. So F is a force which goes in a vertical uh, direction. So how can I determine it? Um, I think I need another determine the force. <coughs> Whenever my springs are stretched, the force is basically along the springs, right? So, uh, what is the force which is acting in this particular direction by one particular um, uh, spring in this particular case? Well, it depends on how much I stretched it, right? I have already stretched it initially by a little bit and now I'm stretching even more. This is hypotenuse, right? So this is L plus L divided by 2, right? If this is L plus L, so this is the half. This is my Y. So what is the length now? Well, it's obviously square root of L plus L square plus y square. y is a function of t, of course, of time. So that's my length. So what's my... Now, you know that uh, according to the Hooke's law, the force is proportional to the elongation with k or kappa being the coefficient of proportionality, the elasticity coefficient. So if from this length I will subtract the initial length, which is L. I will get this elongation multiplied by K, that will be my force. So the force of one particular spring is K times this square root L plus L divided by 2 square plus Y square minus L. That's my force, which is going along this spring. Now, that was all part of the previous lecture. Sorry, L divided by 2. The string was all, this spring was only L, L divided by 2. Okay. Now, if this is the force, now I'm interested only in the vertical component of this force, right? Because it has horizontal component and vertical component. Now this uh, spring also will have horizontal component and vertical component and horizontal components will be equal to each other and nullify each other obviously so I'm interested only in vertical. So the vertical component of the first force is I have to multiply this force by sine of this angle which means y divided by uh, hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse I know, so I will have this, which is k times 
this uh, expression in square brackets times y divided by square root of l plus l2 plus y square which is equal to if I will divide this by this now this divided by this would be 1 so it's k y 1 minus L divided by 2 divided by square root of L plus L square plus Y square equals KY1 minus if I will bring this 2 down and put it under the square root it will be 4 and it will cancel this so it would be L divided by square root of L plus L square plus 4 Y square. So this is my formula for one particular force. This is absolute value. Let's not talk about direction. Now, this force on a second uh, spring is exactly the same vertical component. So basically I can uh, double this um, force and I will get basically the whole force which is acting on my mass in the vertical direction and I can equate it to uh, m times second derivative of y. So double this y square of t is equal to double k y 1 minus l divided by square root of l plus l square minus plus 4 y square of t. And I probably have to put minus here because the force is acting, if y is positive, means uh, I'm going up with my displacement, the force goes down. So, and that's actually corresponds to Hooke's law. Hooke's law is always uh, displacement has to have a minus sign to get to the force. Force is equal to minus k times displacement. So basically that's what we have here. That was the result of the previous lecture and then I was talking about that this differential equation is very difficult to solve. This is also a function of t. So what I suggested, I suggested basically to drop y of t as being very small relative to L and then I did certain um, simplification and I came to a basically if this is some kind of a constant then I will have the harmonic equation, obviously. Uh, second derivative is equal to some kind of a multiplier by displacement. Normal uh, mm, second order differential equation for, uh, for a spring, which gives you harmonic oscillations. But only approximately. So even in this simplified model, I do not have clear harmonic oscillation. So forget about the real, stri uh, real string. Obviously it's not harmonic. However, however, it's really very interesting and it's simplified model and it gives you kind of an impression what exactly should be expected. Now, I would like to approach this same problem um, from a completely different perspective, from a perspective of energy. Okay, so, now, we know the force. This is the force, right? This is the force which is applied to our mass when it's moved up or down by y of t. Alright. Now, 
I would like to calculate the potential energy which is accumulated in this mass when I moved it to certain initial displacement, let's say A. So Y of zero, so at initial displacement is equal to A. What happens? So I moved it up and let it go. Now, let it go means the second derivative is equal, to, uh, I mean the first derivative is equal to zero, that's the speed. Okay, so what happens? Well, obviously I have accumulated certain potential energy in the mass. When I let it go, uh, the, the springs are moving it down and my potential energy is lessening, uh, but my kinetic energy is increasing. The sum of potential plus kinetic should be constant. The preservation, the conservation of, of energy law, right? So the maximum would be kinetic energy when it goes to horizontal position and then by inertia it will go down and will um, slow down so the kinetic energy will be less and less but this, uh, the springs will be stretched uh, when, the mo when, the mo when the mass goes down the springs will be stretched again so it will accumulate again potential energy so potential energy in the beginning goes to kinetic in the middle and then potential uh, at the bottom and then again back to kinetic potential and they're always uh, exchanging these values between themselves kinetic and potential energy but always equals to initial potential energy uh, which is basically our work when we were trying to stretch uh, both springs by moving by the distance a in the very beginning. So first of all let's calculate how much potential energy we have supplied to the body, to this uh, mass between the two springs when we are stretching it. We know the force and the force can be considered as constant around one particular value of y. So if I will multiply it by differential of y, by the small um, uh, increment of, of the displacement, uh, I will have differential of work, which is equal to function of time, which is this one, times dy. That's the work. Right now, um, we know the force. We know the force, so it will be two uh, k. Well, I will use the plus in this particular case because the force of the springs are going down, but whenever we are stretching, uh, moving up, we are working against these forces. So the force which we are applying is exactly equal to this one but with an opposite sign. So that's why I put plus. Plus k y uh, 1 minus L divided by square root of L plus L square plus 4 y square. So that's my times dy. So this is the differential of work. This is an infinitesimal amount of work which I have to apply to stretch from y, so if this is my, so this is y, and this is y plus dy, so on this particular uh, segment I will have to spend as much work, I have to make, uh, uh, spend as much energy to move from this to this, from y to y plus dy, where dy is infinitesimal inc increment. So that's why I'm using function, uh, the force as a function of t in exactly the same way as a function of displacement, and then multiply by dy. Now, how can I calculate the whole work from here to a? Well, I have to integrate dy from y is equal to 0 to y is equal to a. 
Now, luckily, this integral is actually a simple one because, well, it's minus, right? So it's two different integrals. Integral of difference is equal to difference of integrals. So this one is just one particular uh, variable y. So it will be integral of y dy. Now integral of y is y squared divided by 2. That's an in, uh, indefinite integral. Now, um, this part, um, again, let me just very briefly say, it's y divided by some kind of a multiplier. 2kl, doesn't matter. This is square root of l plus l square plus 2 square plus 4 y square. Now, this is actually easy because if you will recall, if you will have this integral, b square plus y square. Now, if you would like to have um, its derivative, first of all, you have to uh, have a derivative from the square root, which is 1 over two square roots times derivative of internal function. Internal function is b squared plus y squared. b squared is a constant and y squared derivative is 2y, right? So that's exactly the same which we have. y and then square root. So all we need is just a couple of multipliers. So I don't want to bother you with uh, exact calculations here because I have already done that and I can just give you exactly the result of this. So it's an easy integral and the answer is 2k y square divided by 2 minus 1 quarter square root of L plus L square plus 4y square. This is indefinite integral and I have to integrate it from 0 to a by y. Okay? So if I will substitute y, I will have 2k a squared divided by 2 minus 1 quarter, L quarter, sorry, it's L quarter, uh, square root of L plus L squared plus 4 A squared minus, now when I substitute 0, it will be 2 K, well this is 0, this is minus, so it will be plus here, L divided by 4, this is 0, uh, so it will be square root of, okay, that's square root of a square, so we can just forget about square root and multiply it by L plus L. So this is my answer. This is a potential energy from 0 to A. Great. So now we have this expression. From this, I can just um, tell the following. If this is a potential energy at point y is equal to A, what is the potential energy at any point y? Well, the potential energy at any point would be would look exactly the same. So I just have to integrate from 0 not to A, but to that particular uh, point, Y. So potential energy at any point Y would be equal exactly the same, but instead of A I should put Y, right? Because it's calculations are exactly the same. So it would be Y squared over 2 minus L4 square root of L plus L square plus 4 Y square plus 2 K 
L for L plus L. So this is potential energy at any point. Now, if I will add to this kinetic energy, kinetic energy is mass times speed, which is first derivative, squared divided by 2, mv squared divided by 2. This is the v. This is the speed. So that's the first derivative. So if I multiply, uh, so if I will add this one, potential energy, to this one, which is kinetic energy, at point y. It should be equal to the full energy. So potential energy at point y plus kinetic energy at point y should be equal to total energy. And total energy is potential energy, which we have just calculated at maximum initial point, whenever we are stretching initially our string, spring. And this is a differential equation. Uh, completely different than the one which we have derived in the very beginning of uh, and in the previous lecture and in the beginning of this lecture. So, we have two different differential equations. Maybe they have two different results. Obviously, it should not be the case, right? Okay. Now, this is this differential equation, which is this plus this equals to this, is actually the same. And the way how you can actually uh, prove to yourself that this is the same is very simple. Now, if this is the differential equation, basically it's one function is equal to another function, then their derivative should be equal, right? These two functions are equal, their derivatives are equal. <coughs> okay, now if you will take the derivative of this function, the derivative of this, well, this is a constant, right? This is all a l l etc so this is a constant now derivative of this if you will do, uh, if you will do this you will have some expression and let's just try to to see what exactly this expression is so this would be derivative of this would be zero now derivative of this uh, if you will take it would be the following uh, well, 2 and 2 will cancel, so it's ky squared, and the derivative by y would be uh, 2ky times derivative of y, right? y is a function of time. Minus 2kl, so it's uh, lk divided by 2, right? Um, now, derivative of this would be uh, 1 over 2 such squares, square roots, times derivative of inner function, which is 8y, and derivative of y is y, and plus, um, well, this is a constant, so we don't have anything of this, but we do have derivative of this, so plus, it's um, m times, uh, this is 2y times y, derivative of derivative, a second derivative, and uh, der divided by 2 gives me this, basically. And now, if you will cancel, now this is equal to 0, right? Because it's all equal to potential energy at point uh, at initial point a which is a constant so that's equal to zero so this is differential equation also now if you can cancel y now i might have made some mistakes i don't know but if i did not it should actually be well the same thing as that one and i did check it in the text for this particular lecture um i have m much more uh, uh, detailed uh, calculations and I had exactly the same equation as, as this one which is not a surprise because obviously no matter how you approach the same problem you have to have the same result 
Okay, so my purpose was that we have approached the same problem, which is a simplified musical string model, from completely two different positions. One was using the Newton's law, another was the law of conservation of energy. And we came up with, well, two different differential equations, but one can be reduced to another, obviously. And um, so that's something which probably you should always try if you don't know really a true result which you are trying to achieve. If you don't, if you have a problem and you don't have an answer, um, you you should really try to solve this problem from two different approaches. And like in this particular case, the second Newton's law and law of conservation of energy, and you should have the same result. And if you do, then you are absolutely sure that your um, answer is is correct. So that's the kind of uh, simplified analysis of um, um, oscillations of musical string. Again, I want to emphasize how complex it is. So even in this simplified model, um, the differential equations which we came up with are not really easily solvable. I don't even dare to try to solve these equations. Maybe there is some way, I just don't know and I don't want to basically go into this. That's something which is not related to the purpose of this course. The purpose is to force you to think about different things by modeling them and trying to approach um, in, in a simplified way. And everything, whatever we're doing, is basically modeling the, the, the nature. Nature is much more complex than our models. All right, so basically that's it. I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Um, and uh, I will try to put some exercises and maybe a little simple problem, solvi uh, so problem solving as a continuation of these two lectures. And obviously I will add exams too. Um, waves, uh, waves are important and kind of complex. Uh, it, it, it's it's really difficult part of the physics, the real waves. I mean, these are simplified waves. The harmonic oscillations are very simplified thing. Um, but in in the more advanced courses of uh, physics, which you will maybe get in, in universities, you will have more complicated modeling and more complicated results. And um, it's very interesting, actually. Complicated, but interesting. All right, thanks very much, and good luck.